Hey folks, we are back with another non-Xer video. Um, I decided to start recording this about five minutes ago. Uh, I hooked up the microphone to the Mac Pro, configured screen recording. I have no idea if everything is working, but I just wanted to get this out. I've been getting some questions about Netboot and why use Netboot? Why, why should I use it? And can I use it? Does it serve any purpose? And the, qu the answer is, if you have a lot of Macs, or maybe you only have a few Macs, but you're constantly tweaking them, reinstalling them, messing them up, you have to reinstall them again, you know, experimenting with stuff, having a Netboot server can be really convenient. All you need is a machine that can act as your server, something with preferably an i-series processor, uh, it'll work on a Core 2 Duo, but i-series is better. And preferably two hard drives, one for the operating system, one for data storage for your Netboot images. Now, I'll get to what Netboot is later. Uh, assuming if you're watching this video, you already kind of think you need it or have a use for it. So what this video is going to focus on is setting up your Netboot image uh, yeah, your Netboot image. So I picked a random operating system. This is uh, 1095 on an Intel Core i5 Mac Mini. And I have a few partitions here, Mavericks, LCAP, High Sierra. Um, what I'm showing you here works on anything from, I believe, Lion and up. I haven't done this in a while on 10.6, so I'll follow up with, uh, with a video on that one. So what we want to do is create an image that we can put on the server, and every time you need to install this image to another machine, you can boot up from the network and quickly restore this image to your computer. It'll save you a lot of time, especially if your name is Greg Rutke of Rutke Mods, who is wasting weeks of his life installing operating systems, this is for you. Now I'll be focusing on Intel, because for PowerPC you need to have a separate PowerPC server running with its own netboot images, but this is for Intel. Alright, so this video is going to be the fastest way to create a net restore image to get your Mac up and running as soon as possible. All you need is Auto DMG, link in the description, and System Image Utility. This is part of your operating system. You can find this in System, Library, Core Services. Here it is. Now, all you need to create an image is let me pull this up. Your OS installer, which has to match the operating system of the machine you are creating the image on. So you need that. And you need system image utility. You open system image utility, select the installer, it'll walk you through the whole thing. But I prefer a different approach. I prefer to create the image with auto DMG and I'll show you why. Ah, why did I close that? You grab your installer, drag it into Auto DMG, and it will show you all the updates that are available for that operating system. You can put in additional software, but I'm going to make this the quick version. So, set it to download. Give it a minute. With that done, only takes a few minutes depending on your uh, download speed. All the updates are built in 
for this version of the macOS. So you click build, you give it a custom name, and I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'm going to call this uh, Mavericks Updated. Click save. And you can view the log if you're into that. And now what it's doing, it's creating a uh, disk image, installing the operating system into that disk image, and then it'll apply the updates as well. And that will be the source that we'll be using in System Image Utility. Instead of the installer, we use the image that AutoDMG is building for us. So we're going to let this run. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, but anything can happen when you're recording. So I'll be right back. Okay, the build is done. I think that took about half an hour. Let me see. Yeah, about half an hour. So we can close Auto DMG now. And this is a complete brand new operating system install. Uh, so you can open Disk Utility, restore this to any other disk, and you'll have a clean install on it. But of course what we're going to do is turn this into a netboot image. So you have to mount it. There it is, Macintosh HD. No users, complete blank install. With the image mounted, we're opening up System Image Utility. It will find either the installer or the mounted uh, disk image. We want to select the disk image. And we want to uh, create a net restore. Not a net boot, not a net install, which you can do if you, um, if you select the actual installer itself, you can do a net install image. But we want net restore. Now there's all kinds of ways to customize this, but we're not going to do that. Let's see, give it a name, Net Restore of Mavericks, and we are also saving that to the desktop. Put in your password, and sit back and wait one more time. <laughs> Just like that, it is done. Click the done button. Now you can create another disk image, but we're just going to quit out of here. Unmount the Macintosh HD, and you may want to save this auto DMG image because it's a complete system with all the updates in it. You know there's not going to be any more updates down the down the road, so might as well save this somewhere. 
And this is the file you're after, the NBI file. I'm going to get situated, get the server installed, and then I'm going to show you how to create the actual Netboot server. Alright, it was just uh, a quick second for you, but I was interrupted by a game of Unreal Tournament. course I had to join in but now that we have our uh, netboot or net restore image created we're gonna set up the server and you can transfer this to another machine if your uh, if the machine you create the image on is not your server you can just take this transfer it to your server machine and then drop it in the server app let's see I'll just use the same machine as an example real quick alright we don't need the tutorials <coughs> I'm not gonna go over how to set up the server so I'm gonna leave everything at, at its defaults even though most of it is wrong I'm gonna open up the advanced tab actually I do have to configure one thing and that is the settings where the server app is going to store all of its uh, server data you do typically you do not want this to be the same as your boot drive so I'm selecting a partition on the second hard drive called storage if you already have a server set up and you are now deciding to uh, select a different hard drive. The copying of service data might take a little longer than this, but this is a clean install, so it shouldn't take that long. There we go. So before we turn on the net install service, we are going to storage, library, server, uh, let's see. Oh, it hasn't created it yet. Okay, so on Mavericks, you have to click Edit Storage Settings. And then select the drive or partition where you want to put the images and client data. That'll create a netboot folder. And in there, netboot sp0, you're going to drop your net restore image. Now, with the image in the right location, uh, newer versions, the server app should update automatically. There it is, Net Restore of Mavericks. Now you want to enable Net Install on Ethernet. If you have Wi-Fi available or Thunderbolt to Ethernet, uh, make sure you select the right port. Even if you have Thunderbolt to Ethernet, uh, if there is an actual Ethernet port available, I would recommend that because Thunderbolt adapters can get a little flaky. If you want to restrict access to the images, you can set MAC address list, but we're not going to do all that. Uh, real quick, before I forget to mention it, uh, click on the image you have, especially if you have multiple. Go down to the gear and say use as default boot image. Any computer that will reach out to the netboot server will know to pick that image. 
Uh, you can also boot up your computer using the option key and then it will show every image you have and you can pick one manually but if you boot up with the N key it'll just reach out to the server and grab the default image first. Now also you can go to edit image settings make it available over HTTP or NFS depending on your network setup HTTP might give you issues so then you can select NFS. You can also make the image uh, available only to some Mac models. I don't really see the point because I know which Mac needs which operating system. Uh, and the image index, I would leave it as is. But you can create a custom index number if you want. When you're done, hit OK. And now we install the machine. All we have to do now is flip it to turn on and you're all set. You are now running a NetBoot server and it's called NetBoot even if you use NetRestore uh, or NetInstall. On Mavericks it's called NetInstall. I think on newer versions of the server app it's called NetBoot. Now you want your server to have the newest operating system possible because uh, even a uh, High Sierra server can serve this image out over the network but uh, if I have a netboot server from uh, let's say 10.7 Lion there might be issues serving this newer operating system image over the network it shouldn't matter because all it's doing is streaming data to another machine but I have found it to be a little unreliable. So I'm gonna set up a laptop so I can demo NetRestore real quick for you and wrap this video up. Be right back. Alright so this is a quick setup of my 2009 17 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, to boot up from the net image you just created or any of the other ones on your server that are set as a default simply power on your Mac and hold down the N key you'll see a spinning globe or a flashing globe depending on the age of your Mac that's it reaching out to the network finding the netboot server and picking the default image on that netboot server found the image you'll see a quick spinning globe and now it will start loading it up you can let go of the end key at this point just sit back and wait and there it is now if you want to erase a hard drive you can do that with disk utility from the top menu just like a regular regular install I already made a partition on this computer, so I'm going to select it, click install, and then just wait it out. Now this is an older Mac, not as fast, the storage is not as fast. Uh, let me see if I can properly focus in on this. There we go. So this will be a little bit slower than a 2012 MacBook Pro or a Mac with a solid state drive or anything newer that you want to image. But still, uh, this will take about five minutes, if that. And it sure beats a traditional install that can take half an hour, 45 minutes, and then you have to do all the software updates. That could be a good hour process. We're already halfway done restoring. I'm not even gonna fast forward this. That's how fast it is.
image is restored. It's going to verify it real quick, make sure there were no read write operation fails during this process. creating the recovery partition. And done. So that took about three minutes. Not bad. And do the setup as you normally would on a clean install. Voila! One brand new fresh install Mac. I think we're just at five minutes at this point. Now, because all the software updates are built in, there's only going to be one or two more available. That's typically an iTunes update. Um, I think there's a an iBooks update floating around out there as well. But that's just one update to worry about. And if you're not using iTunes, you don't even have to install it. This is all set. So, there it is. Brand new installed Mac, start to finish in about five minutes. Uh, even less if you have a faster Mac. Now, of course you need a, a good network as well, gigabit ethernet, all ethernet. The, it will find a netboot server over Wi-Fi, but I really don't recommend it because you're gonna be there all day. Um, this was just a quick guide on how to quickly set up a netboot server and how to restore one of those images to your Mac. If you have multiple net restore images or a mix of net install, net restore, net boot, um, you, you want to start up a Mac with the option key held down. So you get all those options, boot options on the screen, then you can pick the image that you want. But since I only have one image on the server right now, booting up with the N key always goes to the default image. So, hope you enjoyed this video. There will be a follow-up where I go a little bit more in-depth about uh, setting up the images. You can uh, add software to the image. So if you want Firefox or certain applications pre-installed, you can put those in the image. Uh, even user accounts. So when it restores, it restarts. You don't even have to do the setup. It already has a user account in it for you. So there's ways to tweak it and enhance it and make it even faster and better. But there was just, uh, this was just a start. So hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, see you next time.